Say hey everybody, welcome to the channel, or welcome back to the channel. If you're subscribed, great. If not, hit the subscribe and the notification bell uh, so you can see when we upload videos. We're back on the video train. Uh, we had a delay, I guess you call it, uh, due to a tornado in the area. I'll uh, post some pictures here so that you can see that uh, the damage as far as the uh, forestation in the area was pretty severe. There were a few homes damaged, nobody was injured, um, but it, it was a pretty significant event. It's been a few weeks ago now, but uh, life's just now getting back to normal. And so uh, uh, we're trying to get back to normal uh, as far or as close as to normal we get. Uh, today, uh, the wet wall behind me, uh, it's been operational, but it's been manual. And so today I'm gonna show you what I've done to get that completely automated uh, as far as the reservoir and the, the pumping system. So stay tuned, here we go, and uh, let's look at all the components we put in to make this thing go. So we want something that is able to shut the water going to the tank off when it gets in a full state. Now these uh, switches uh, made by Sump Alarm, uh, I'll actually uh, put a link to uh, them in uh, Amazon. Uh, that's where I got them. Uh, I've gotten two of them. I need a third one because I have a third reservoir for our upcoming Beto bucket uh, system, but uh, it can uh, run either to fill or to empty. Um, and so it's got a weight uh, to where you can adjust the uh, float height. Um, you can also just tie it to uh, structure and then it will float up and you can hear the stainless steel ball in there. I think it's a Honeywell switch that's inside of there. It's pretty good quality. Um, the great thing is that the uh, switch and the leads are rated up to 220 volts, they can run a pump directly. So you can actually uh, power you know, a pump uh, directly with this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna wire it in uh, to our system to open a valve that's going to fill the tank. So let's go take a look at that. So here's our IBC uh, 300 gallon tote. Uh, this is our return line or the drain from the wet wall. This is our submersible pump. I think it's about a, a 4,000 gallon per minute uh, pump. Uh, that's all that was required uh, to run the wet wall. Uh, we actually uh, verified that with the manufacturer. Um, don't think you'll be able to see it, but back up in here is the float. Uh, it's actually floating now and it's shut off. You can see the water is about three inches from the top. I've just got that cracked open right now as I check the system. I'll be covering this back up and then we've kept the black fabric on there just to keep algae growth down. Uh, in the heat of the summer, we put a uh, silver tarp over it as well. Uh, the, being buried in the ground, it helps keep it cooler. Um, and uh, in the winter time, it'll be less apt to freeze. Um, and with that, we didn't want to run the fill line outside and have it susceptible to weather. So let's show you what we've done on the inside as far as how we uh, fill the tank uh, when, that, um, when that float switch kicks on and says it's requesting water. So here's our water feed that'll come into the various reservoirs inside the greenhouse. Currently, these are shut off. Those actually supply water. If the pump were to fail, we could open those and we could run these manually, these wet walls manually off the well, uh, but they're shut off. But the feed, the supply line comes in here, it goes down and it tees off because it's gonna go back and it's gonna feed those reservoirs, which will have the exact same setup. I'm actually wiring those up now. Um, we've got to tidy up some of our wiring because we put this in temp just to test it out. Just a rain flow, uh, 24 volt uh, valve. So most of the time you need that Rainbird uh, controller in order to get that 24 volt signal. 
Uh, and so, like I said, our water will come in when that valve opens and we put it into the drain. And so then it runs out to the reservoir and this way our supply line, we don't have to worry about one, having extra line going all the way back out to the reservoir and then the exposed line outside having the opportunity to freeze and break. And so I uh, just thought that'd be a little bit better. Um, we're actually gonna put a T with a, a two inch T with a three quarter inch, uh, they call it a bushing T, so it'll accept a three quarter inch line. Uh, right now I've just siliconed it and used some uh, flex seal. Um, since there's not really any pressure, since three quarter inch goes in, and into the two inch drain line and it's really a drain line, it just runs. So not really any pressure there uh, to speak of. So now let's take a look at the way that I get this valve to, to operate. So again, we've got this temporary. We are going to pretty it up and uh, these are just uh, low voltage wires because we're only operating 24 volts. So the line comes in from that switch in the reservoir and depending on if you want normally open or normally closed, right? So do you want to drain the reservoir or fill the reservoir? In our case, we want to fill the reservoir. So when that float drops down, it closes the connection that's open normally and it closes it and it comes over here. And the way we get our 24 volts is pretty simple. We just use a doorbell transformer. And so it runs off of 110, uh, but then you can see here, this is all 24 volt, low voltage AC uh, that goes out. And so literally we bring, you know, one side of the uh, pump wire in and then the other side out to uh, the valve. Uh, and so basically what that does is that completes the 20 volt, 24 volt circuit out to that Rainbird valve and opens it up. When the float drops, it opens the Rainbird um, valve. And when it fills up to the point where we set it at, which is about four inches from the top, and the float then shuts the circuit and the Rainbird valve closes. And uh, so now it's automated. And then we actually have the pump on a timer. And so right now we're running at 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off uh, throughout the daylight hours. Now we get really fancy. Uh, we could tie it into the relays uh, for the end wall fans and we could run it uh, when the end wall fans are running. Um, but we are thinking about uh, possibly trying to run uh, warm water uh, from a reservoir inside a compost pile uh, to provide uh, some heat inside the greenhouse in the winter. So we may, may opt not to tie it to the end wall fans because we may want to run this uh, independent of the end wall fan. So right now we just have it on a timer and uh, 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off. The main thing is you want to just keep, you know, this evaporative wet wall, um, you know, with uh, some cool water on it. It's off right now. It's been off almost 30 minutes. It's getting ready to turn back on and uh, it's still damp uh, and you can feel the, the coolness kind of emanating from it. Uh, again, that reservoir being below ground and coming off of well water, uh, it stays around 55 degrees. Um, so it gives a nice cooling effect inside, uh, inside the main body of the greenhouse as the air flows uh, pardon our mess, but as the air flows in, gets sucked through by the end wall fans, uh, you know, it cools, uh, moistens the air, evaporative cooling, and uh, it'll drop the temperature, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30 degrees, depending on the intensity of the heat during the day. Looks like we're sitting down there. We got a little thermometer down there. Uh, looks like we're sitting right at about 85. If all of this stuff was shut off, uh, it'd be 110, 115 degrees in here today, even though it's a, only about an 80 degree day outside. Uh, if it's sunny, um, it doesn't take long and this, this thing really heats up. So 
anyway, uh, that's how we have uh, done it. And hopefully you can uh, leverage the information and use it if you have an applicable need. It's uh, just the way that we solved our need to kind of automate our wet wall system uh, from you know pumping the water to refilling the water to turning the system on and off. So I hope you found that helpful. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, comment below if you find uh, something that uh, you, you found useful or, or you know you have questions uh, or other things you'd like to see. Um, you can see we pretty much don't have any production right now in here when we lost power during uh, the tornado uh, the generator didn't start uh, it took about a day and a half to get it rectified and repaired uh, we were without power five days uh, and so we pretty much lost everything in the NFT trays and uh, we're starting everything over in here so it was just a good opportunity to kind of go through and and uh, Kind of re redo some things and so we've got some lettuce starts we're getting ready to throw into these channels as soon as i get this reservoir wired so that's what i'm going to go do next thanks for watching